The ideal zoo for the 21st century is a zoo that is aware of its responsibility for conservation. We can translate the knowledge and expertise that we have in exhibiting species to conservation of those species in the wild. Zoos have huge potential. If you look at the volume of people that visit zoos, 140 million people visit Iaza zoos. That's a massive number of people to reach with a conservation message. I think the urgency of conservation, because things are happening very fast now, now calls for action. I mean, we have been talking about conservation for many, many, many years. And a lot of politicians have said that they made resolutions and conventions, etc., etc. But nothing has been done, or at least too little has been done. But now it's time for action. If we don't try to address this problem, then we will lose a lot of species, lose a lot of biodiversity. And that's really irresponsible if we just watch and doing nothing. Zoos are some sort of an open window to nature where we can present the nature to people. The nature people will never get, get an opportunity to see, to see themselves. And when you buy a ticket to the zoo, part of the money you pay for your ticket, you actually pay for those conservation activities that the zoos are involved in in the wild. You actually become a conservationist yourself. And I think that's very important and it's also important for the zoos to show this to people, to tell them we can help the fight against loss of biodiversity. EASA is working together with other similar organizations all over the globe. And the European zoos link up very closely with IUCN, which is the Global Nature Conservation Organization. It's a sort of a UN for nature. If we're just alone as one zoo, we cannot do very much. But combining the whole global network of zoos and aquaria, we can really do uh, make a difference. Many years ago, we started to work with a researcher working with Nolan Tapia, and that's Patricia Medici, uh, who is a biologist, conservationist, Brazilian. I think Patty's way of running her project with the Nolan Tapia is a master example of how zoos and the field researchers can work together. The strength of linking my field activities with zoos has so many different sides because it gives me the chance to share what I do in the wild with the zoo community and gives me the chance to provide information to better care of tapers in captivity. On the other hand, it gives zoos the, the chance to come to our field sites, to experience field work with us, to exchange ideas, exchange information. I think the ideal model for a zoo in the 21st century would be a combination of providing the general public with the opportunity of um, seeing these wonderful animals and falling in love with these wonderful animals and continuing to contribute to conservation in the wild and getting more involved, um, sending people to participate in this field project so that they can bring the stories from the field to the zoos and share those stories with the general public. So it becomes a cycle, it becomes a, uh, a process of exchange of information between ex situ, in situ, conservation in the wild, conservation in captivity. I think it's important that people have a face-to-face -face encounter with other species and to be within feet of a big cat, an elephant, some very small beautiful bird, some tiny ugly reptile. These are very special experiences and that, that intimacy that you can have in a zoo to see something that's very real makes the experience alive. 
zoos touch all socio-economic classes, all ethnic backgrounds, everybody brings their children to the zoo. And it's a direct way for family learning. So the whole family is learning about conservation. And people have an experience that raises their awareness of how important the natural environment is, how every, every species on the planet, all of the biodiversity that we have, is the nuts and bolts of the machinery that make our planet work. And people, if they have a good experience at a zoo, go away understanding that. Nobody works in zoos because they like to see animals in artificial environments. We, we do it because we care about the long-term future of those species. For a long time I've been involved specifically with small carnivore conservation. And I was contacted by a project in Vietnam about 10 years ago that was working with the Austin civet, it's a particularly beautiful small carnivore that comes from northern Vietnam. And we tried to outline very clear goals that as well as looking after specifically the Austin civets through breeding them in the national park, we were also looking at supporting resources to schools in Vietnam, to raise awareness of illegal wildlife trade, to train forest rangers to be more effective in anti-poaching, to raise money through the carnival program in Vietnam to allow research into the problems facing Southeast Asia. I uh, study in uh, International Training Center of um, Daro Wildlife Conservation Trust. And um, I came here to uh, learning about the um, biodiversity conservation and um, education between the zoo and conservation. We have uh, people from uh, 10 different countries, South America, Africa, and now uh, Asia. We are all from developing country, and uh, we have the uh, same problem with wildlife and conservation and also a lot of things we can learn from each uh, other. The uh, main problem about wildlife in Vietnam is uh, uh, hunting and habitat loss. Most of the uh, wildlife have been hunted for the meat consumption or uh, the traditional medicine for pet or uh, the souvenir. I am doing uh, this code because in Vietnam we don't have a very much uh, knowledge about the conservation and so I want to learn more about technique and to see more about the, how people are doing with the wildlife and with biodiversity and to have for my country. I think more and more young people like me care for the conservation and uh, I think the future we, we, we care better for the biodiversity and conservation. The best moment I've had in my career was probably going back to Madagascar where I've spent a lot of time working with um, critically endangered lemurs and to be able to see that, um, uh, that zoos are making a difference on the ground in Madagascar uh, was actually one of my favorite moments. What is new now um, since a number of years and um, what IASA has really contributed to um, making a difference is that zoos have joined forces and joined expertise to carry out conservation programs in the wild. And that has made a big difference to um, the amount of funding that is available for conservation in C2 um, and also the amount of expertise that is, um, is contributing to those programs. Zoos are actually on the forefront of um, species conservation, that is um, really looking after single species or single populations of animals in the wild, because we are very good at that. We keep species, we breed species, we show species of animals to the public, and we can translate the knowledge and expertise that we have to conservation of those species in the wild. Education, conservation and research are the three primary roles for zoos. Zoos should never become museums. Zoos should not be the last resort of an animal. 